We live. It feels good to be back. Summer break is over and we are back. So as I get continue to get set up, let's just enjoy this song by Natalie Grant. I can't get this set up here. Hey there, Lori. More than a kiss. All right, I just want to keep getting set up here. Give me a moment, please. Just worship while I get it together. I uh, can't find my share button here on the phone. Just set this free today. Thank you. Lord. Come on, we gotta choose him tonight. We gotta choose him. I want to share this to my wall. <clears throat> and I'm having a bit of a challenge. <laughs> if you've ever watched any of my streams, you know technical issues, technical things are not my niche. So uh yeah. Let's just try and see how this works. I want to put this on my wall, and I'm not seeing the share feature here on my, on the phone. Give me a moment here. I'm gonna log out of there and then go back in. Just worship while everybody gets in to see who's gonna join me tonight. Of course, if they don't, there's always a replay. There's always a replay. Amen. Amen. There's always a replay. Let's do this. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. All right, you know what? I'm not going to fool with this. I'm just going to go straight to Periscope. Put the camera over for me. Thank you, Jesus. Alrighty, hello, Periscope. Woo, me and my technical stuff. I don't do so well with the techno thing. Thank you, Lord. I love that song. I love that song. Help me want you, Jesus, more than anything. So I just see Lori. I don't know if Lori is still here. You know, Facebook doesn't stream um, comments as well on the laptop as it does on the uh, on the app. So but I want to go ahead and um, give it another minute to give some people time to log in. This is new for me um, coming off of summer break. This is the first stream coming off of summer break. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share what the Lord has placed on my heart. So whether you catch me live, whether you catch the replay, Trust me, it's going to bless you because it's been a blessing to me um, with what he's been downloaded into me. And I just want to share that with you all tonight. So again, if you're live with me, thank you for joining me. If you're watching by replay, I'm Prophetess Michelle Witherspoon. And I, if you've never seen me before, welcome to my to my telecast, my, my, uh, my live streams. I have no professional technical skills. You will see that as you continue to follow me, as you as you continue to watch my streams. But I do always have a word from the Lord to share with, with you. So just worship with me for a moment. Let's give it a moment and see if anyone joins in. If not, um, thank you for those that are watching the replay. Thank you for those that will watch, um, I mean, excuse me, that will also share uh, the video. I didn't really uh, advertise that would be on tonight. I normally put an ad out before, but I only put something out there like around 7.30, and here I am 30 minutes later. So I'm sure some people will see it, um, and some will also join in. So hopefully they will uh, catch it as soon as they can. But again, if not, we continue to move forward because there's always a replay, and that's a good thing. So I'm going to talk as if it's a lot of people on here. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to talk as if, as if there are a lot of people on here tonight. So let's just worship. Sound crew, if you can turn that up a little bit. So tonight we want to talk about choosing him. The Lord is saying, choose me. That's what we want to talk about tonight. Excuse me. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What is your choice on tonight? Who are you choosing? 
what are you choosing? Have you made up your mind to choose him? Choose him. That is what we're talking about tonight. Choosing him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I choose to worship. I choose to worship with my life. I choose to worship with my heart. I choose to worship beyond music, um, beyond Sunday morning. I choose to live a life of worship before the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We honor you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. I'm going to worship. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. He's healing me. I'm going to worship. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you right now, Father. Hallelujah. He's healing me. I'm going to worship. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna worship. Sound crew, if you can bring it down a little bit for me, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for this evening. I thank you for those that are able to join live, those that will watch by replay. Father, I thank you for the word that you have given me to share on tonight. I thank you that in advance that it will bless others as well, that it will bring about a transformation in their lives. Father God, I just thank you that it will draw them even closer to you. Lord God, this isn't about me. It's all about you on tonight. So have your way. Move as you desire. I yield completely to you on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So, well, here I am. I must worship ministries on a new night, a night that most people are not uh, expecting me to log in live. But um, one of the things that we're doing and as we go forward from off of our summer break is to do, do something a little bit new. I even changed the name from I Must Worship Ministries Bible Study to I Must Worship Ministries Live because each time that we want to go live, we will bring you something new, something different, um, something in addition to what we were normally doing. We just want to stretch ourselves a little bit. We want to be a lot more flexible to the leading of, of, of Holy Spirit. So on occasion, you may have a guest psalmist, intercessors, or speakers that may join us. Um, it may just be study. It may just be prayer and study. Who knows? Whatever the Lord leads. But I... Uh, um, I just wanted to be a little more flexible. So the nights may even change because initially I set up for um, uh, Tuesday nights at, at 730. And I realized that my schedule is not going to accommodate me to do this every Tuesday night at the same time. I'm back in school. Again, summer break is over. So I'm back in school. I attend School of Supernatural Ministry. That's a, um, a school from Bethel, but we have it at our church at Joliet First Assembly. So I'm doing that. And also, I'm also enrolled into um, the Global University, the School of Bereans, because I want to go a little bit further in my study of the Lord and and um, you know do some more do some more things ministry wise. So there's a lot of things going on, a lot of events that I'm being invited to, some to speak at, some to just attend to learn and glean from others. And so I realized, you know. Um, especially after talking to Andrea. <laughs> Andrea, I love you whenever you watch this replay. You guys know Andrea was with me for several months doing Bible study, and now she's doing um, a ministry. We are not so different. And so um, so she's doing what God has given her to do. I'm still here doing what he's given me to do, and I want to advance it. And it took her to help me to realize, do you realize, help, she, it took her to help me realize that every Tuesday, it's just not going to work for you. She's like, did you forget you got this? Did you forget you got that? So even while she's to sit beside me, and give me my schedule and remember everything that I should have known on my own calendar. She still tracks my, my schedule. She still knows what's going on with me. And I'm so, so, so grateful to her. So I know she's at church tonight at her church. And I just want to say, Andrea, I love you. And I'm so grateful to, to be a part of your journey because you helped me so much. And I'm so glad to be able to help you as well. And y'all, she's still helping me because I realized I can't do this specific on a set time every Tuesday night. So again, being flexible, being pliable to the way the Lord is directing me, what I will do is I'll be here at least once a week, um, but on what night, I don't know. So you guys follow follow us, I Must Worship Ministries, on Facebook, like us on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and check out and see what we're doing, where we're going, where we're going to be, and when we're going live. Look for the notifications that pop up on your phone, because that'll be me saying, hey, I'm live tonight without any notice. Like, you know, I'll, I'll see other people, they just pop up, you know, and 
the notifications notifications come up and I log in as well. So that's one thing I want to give you all tonight. That's one. I have a lot of announcements because we've been gone for the whole summer. So bear with me while I get through all these announcements. So I want to talk to you now. There is a new book. I have a second book in the hands of my publisher right now. I'm so, so excited. So my first book, Hit No More, with the subtitle, You Should Have Caught Me Before I Knew Who I Was, was released November of 2018. And, and right now we're pushing for part two, um, which is called Hit No More, subtitle, for there will be exposure even greater. We're pushing for um, a fall release. Keep praying for us, keep praying for us. But we're pushing for a fall release on that second book. So that, again, that's another thing. There's been a lot of writing, a lot of writing over, over the summer months. I stayed busy all summer, summer long, and still busy as we move into the fall. But I want to give you guys, um, for those of you who don't know me and not familiar with the book, I want to give you a little bit of background on the origin of the titles and how these books came about. So hitting no more was a word that the Lord spoke to me um, in prayer back in 2017. And I was uh, just thanking him for just like keeping me in a cave, protecting me and shielding me, hiding me in, the, in that cave from the enemy so that he would not take and abuse what God had given me, what he had placed within me. And then oftentimes um, when God is, uh, we, know when, we know what God is calling us to. But a lot of times the enemy will use the voices of others to get in our ear and convince us otherwise, convince us opposite of what God was saying. Kind of like what um, the serpent did to Eve. Did God really say don't, don't eat of that, that tree? Did he really say it? You know, so sometimes people close to you can get in your ear and distract you and cause you to miss what God is planned for your life. So I was thanking him and saying, Lord, thank you for keeping me in. And basically, it's like he, he shielded me from the voices of others. It's like he literally hid me uh, in plain sight. And um, and one day, it's just he just said, you know, his glory was rising upon me. And he declared me to be hidden no more. And then sometime later, it was around the, uh, New Year's Eve 2017, he began to show me um, a bunch of people running. And I saw a lot of people running. And they were saying, you should have caught me before I knew who I was. That was their declar declaration, that you should have caught me before I knew who I was. And then I began to realize that the two went together because these are people like myself, they're discovering who God has called them to be and they are not allowing the voice of the enemy to stop them. This book is an ebook. So you can go to amazon.com and download it on your phone. It's a short book. You can download it on your phone. You can download it to your tablet um, from amazon.com. And again, that's hidden no more. You should have caught me before I knew who I was by yours truly, Michelle Witherspoon. And now part two, which is now in the hands of the publisher as of this past weekend. Uh, we were really pushing y'all. Hopefully we can get it done for this fall. But this one is hit no more for there will be exposure even greater. Um, this book is a lot deeper than the first one because this one is dealing with his shepherds. It's dealing with his shepherds and it's dealing with the shepherds who have stepped out of bounds with the way they have been handling God's people. Um, then he gave me a vision. He showed me the out of bounds field of out of bounds area of a football field. Y'all know, I don't know nothing about football. That's my husband's thing, but I know what I was looking at because it was familiar and I've seen it before. It was the out of bounds area. And he began to speak to me. He said, he spoke and said, many of my shepherds are out of bounds with the way that they are handling my people. He said that they've stepped beyond the boundaries he has set for handling his people. So now, what are those boundaries, you guys? It's the word of God. The boundaries are set in the word of God. I took a look at um, 2 Chronicles 117. Um, this is, um, here, I'll just read it. I'll just read it to you. It says, that night, God appeared to Solomon and asked him, he said, um, he let me slow down because I'm excited. Let me slow down. slow down. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask for whatever you want me to give you. God gave Solomon basically a blank check. He said, ask me whatever you want me to give you. That's what he's going to give him. But in the verse 10, I love Solomon's response. He said, God, he said, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people for who is able to govern this people, this great people of yours? He asked for wisdom and knowledge on how to lead God's people. He's basically saying, help me to stay within these boundaries. Help me not to step out of bounds with the way I, I handle your people. So what really stood out to me when I read this 
what really stood out to me and given in the context of the book the Lord has given me, I love what Solomon said. He asked God, he said, who is able to govern this great people of yours? Because here, here, here is a leader acknowledging that the people of God belong to who? To God, not himself. They belong to God. And here's what God is addressing through this book. Because when shepherds, this is what they're missing in some areas. This is what they're missing. When they have stepped, they're caused them to step out of bounds. It's when they cross that boundary and real and not handling people as if they belong to God, but treat them as if they belong to themselves. This is where they're stepping out of order. This is where they're stepping out of bounds. So this is a book to be, bring some realignment. It's not to bash anybody, of course, but it is there to bring about some healing, to draw people to God, to repentance, to cause an awakening to the things that are keeping them out of alignment with the purpose and plan of God. So reminder, hit no more. You should have caught me before I knew who I was. That is already on Amazon right now. You can download that right now. That's there. Part two. Hit no more, or there will be exposure even greater. It's planned to be, um, it's planned for it to be released this fall. Um, so that's it for announcements. I'm gonna ask Sound Crew to bring that music all the way down. Thank you for uh, working with me tonight. Y'all know my, my children. I'm a sound crew. That's that's all. My children. I'm a sound crew. Um, but yes. Yeah, so anyway, that's it for announcements. Um, if you're watching me for the first time, I'm, I'm Prophetess Michelle with a spoon, and this is I Must Worship Ministries. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, um, and Instagram as well. So tonight, let's move forward. Tonight, 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 tonight. This is what I want to talk about. Something that I just have not been able to shake for the last whew, several weeks. And it's like, okay, I'm getting closer to summer break being over. And Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And I realize, you know what? This thing that I can't shake. This is this is what it is, because I've been hearing and releasing prophetic words uh, for individuals as led, as led of Holy Spirit, of course, and many of them include a very specific word. And that word is. As you choose me. I keep hearing the Lord say that as I give something to someone and this is what the Lord is saying, but the words choose me is, is what I kept hearing and what I kept sending to different individuals. He's saying choose me and several are looking for god to move in their lives but he was responding with the words choose me so um the song that i played earlier tonight when we first opened up if you missed it you can go back and catch the replay more than anything by natalie grant we were just with her um Sunday night, um, the, some people from my church and I, we were there to service um, prayer partners to minister to the people that um, after her service when she made her altar call. But one of the songs that she sings that I absolutely love is called More Than Anything. And I want to just share the lyrics with you. Um, she says, help me want the healer more than the healing and help me want the savior more than the saving. Help me want the giver more than the giving. Oh, help me want you, Jesus, more than anything. And the Lord wants to bring us into alignment so that so that we may receive what we're asking for. The challenge comes when many of us realize there's a condition placed on what we're seeking. A lot of us don't want to meet that condition. We want what we want, but we don't want to meet, meet that condition. So here, here's some things that I just want to bring, bring out a little bit more. Um, uh, to you, I took a look at Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Remember, a lot of us seeing a lot of uh, areas like, um, let's say Chicago, because I'm here in Aurora, Illinois, uh, but I grew up south side of Chicago, and it breaks my heart to hear about all of the gun violence in the city that I grew up in, a city that where we as children could go outside and play freely and come back home. We didn't have to run if we heard a pop, 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 because if we heard a pop, 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 we knew it was fireworks. But now when children hear pop, 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 it's gunfire and there's children that have to run there's children that are being hurt and bullets coming through their windows in their homes and different people innocent bystanders are being hurt because of all of this gunfire so a lot of us are praying for healing in our land and we want to see something done but god is saying in second chronicles second chronicles 7 14 he said if my people see there's a condition right there we want the healing but he, he laid out four things he laid out four things he said pray he says, seek my face. He said, turn, excuse me. He said, turn from their wicked ways. And he said, then, then I will, um, 
Where am I? Then I will hear from heaven, and then I will I will heal, heal the land. If, I'm sorry, I missed one. He said, humble themselves. So I said, four. I'm, I'm acting like brother man on the fourth floor. I put up three fingers and I'm talking four. Y'all forgive me for that one. But again, humble yourself, pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways. That's a condition. You want the healing? This is the condition that I need you to meet. Because healing, here's the thing, healing is yours. Healing is promised to you. In fact, it belongs to you. My son died on the cross for your healing. But there's some things that I'm requiring of you. I'm requiring for you to humble yourself. I'm requiring you to seek my face. I'm requiring you to pray. And I'm requiring for you to turn from your wicked ways. I have, there's some things that you need to choose to do in order to see what you want to see. Matthew 6:33. It talks about seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness will be added unto you. Choose to seek his kingdom first. We know you got needs. I got needs. We all have needs. God, stop minimizing your needs. But he said, hey, make a choice here. Choose to seek me first. Choose to seek my kingdom first. Choose to seek all my righteousness first. Everything else is coming. But this is, this is the condition. This is the thing that I'm required of you to do. It's to, to seek me first. So he's not minimizing your need. He knows what we have need of before we even ask. But a lot of times we, we ask and we look for him to, to give and to do. And we're not looking to surrender and submit to, you know, to him. I have an uncle. I have an uncle. He calls me whenever he wants something. And then after that, I don't hear no more from him. I, I don't hear anything from him until the next time he needs some. So one time, one time I called him. I'm like, hey, uncle, it's your favorite niece. And he named all my siblings but me. He's like, Ann? And I said, no. He said, Kiwana? I said, no. Keisha? I said, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? He did not even know my, my voice. Sorry, that's a phone call trying to break through. He did not know my voice. He knew my voice when he wanted some money. He knew my number when it popped up on his phone when he wanted some money. But he did not know my voice when I called him and said, hey, how you doing? And, you know, I just thought, wow, he, he went to naming everybody. And I had to tell him who I was. I said, well, mighty funny. I had to tell him who I was when he wanted something from me. But I had to tell him. And I didn't call because I wanted things. I just happened to call. I just happened to call. And he didn't know who I was. So this is what I realized what the Lord was saying as I was putting the notes together. And he was, Holy Spirit was allowing me to recall some things. He says, you want my healing, but will I have to remind you? of who I am and that it is me that is causing you to live, move, and have your being. Will I have to remind, remind you of that? Will I have to remind you to take time and commune with me or are, or are you too busy doing church work, running errands, tending to other things that are temporal and that have no eternal value? He said, what are you planning to do after you receive my healing for your life? After I've given you what you've asked for, what are you planning to do afterwards? And am I even included? Are you going to choose me? Do you just want the giving or do you want me the giver? Or, or do, you, do you just want my healing so you can go on and, and do things what you want to do? Or do you, do, you even, do you even want me? He says, choose me. Even Joshua, I took a look at Joshua today, Joshua uh, 24, 14 through 15. And Joshua, Joshua chose God. Joshua chose God. He said, look, y'all, y'all, everybody else was choosing their idols and they were choosing to worship the idols that their fathers had worshiped. But Joshua made a choice and he chose God. He said, you know what? Y'all need to put that stuff away. But you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He made a choice. He made a decision to choose God. We're going to serve the Lord. I don't know. You know what? All this stuff over here that y'all, y'all trying to bring down the line. And I see that even today. I see that even today. I see so many uh, believers, they, they, they don't, they choose, they, they say they believe Christ, but then they're, when I see Facebook posts and they want to, they want to pray to this and they want to pray to that and they want to pray to the ancestors and they want to pray to, come on y'all, listen, if God be God, serve God, make a choice, choose him because you want his healing because everything else I'm going to tell you, dead ancestors is not going to heal you. The universe is not going to heal you. I see many believers praying to the universe. Pray. Seriously, God created the universe. Why are we stopping at the universe? Why are we worshiping the, the creation versus the creator? He's saying, choose me, because I tell you something, when you're sick in a hospital, 
or when you're, you when you get some issues going on, I'm going to tell you, you, you know you're calling on Jesus, don't you? When somebody is near death, keep calling on dead people and see what it's going to get you. But begin to choose him and let, let him bless you and choose him, not because of what you want, but choose him because he is Lord of all. Choose him because he is your savior. Choose him because he is your creator. Choose him because he loved you, not because of what you want. I remember some time ago I was praying for a, a close friend of mine and she would call, you know, periodically and she would ask me, you know, tell me some things going on in her life and, and she would want prayer and um, she had some issues going on and, and sometimes she, you know, she would look for, you know, the Lord to, to give her a word and she knows, you know, I'm prophetic. So she would call and say, you know, you know, can you, can you pray for me? You know, I, I need a word from the Lord. And I would go before God on her behalf and I would come back and, and bring to her whatever the Lord would say concerning her circumstances and concerning um, her situation. And then one day the Lord spoke to me in, in, in the middle of prayer. He said to me very clearly, he says, she wants the prophetic, but she doesn't desire me. She wants the prophetic, but she doesn't desire me. And then he began to highlight different moments in her life where she had opportunities to choose him, but she rejected him. She wanted his word, but she didn't want him. She wanted whatever was going to get her through the moment, through the day, through, through whatever. I don't know, but he was very clear. She wants the prophetic, but she doesn't desire me. He said a question. Now, where would we be if Jesus had chosen his own will over choosing the will of the Father. Where would we be if Jesus had chosen his will over the will of the Father? Had he not said, nevertheless, that will be done. Had he not said, into, my, into your hands I commend my spirit. You know, uh, and then here's the thing. Jesus didn't just choose the will of the Father. He followed through. And see, that's that's another thing. That's another key thing that we got to pay attention to, because I hear people say, well, I choose this will for my life. I choose this will. But listen, do, are you following through? Are you are you beating that condition that he set before you? Because Jesus followed through. He didn't just choose the will of the father. He also followed through because um, he could he could have if he wanted to. He chose to do the will of the Father. He chose to follow through. And that's something that we need to do. We need to follow through. Not only did he choose to do the will. He did the will. He didn't say, I'm just going to choose your will. He did it. He literally followed through with what God called him to do, why he was sent into the earth. And we got to think about that. If he didn't choose him, if he didn't choose the father, where would we be? So are we willing to choose him to the point of following through with what he's called us to do? Are we willing to choose him? Or are we still saying, I choose this will for my life. And then next thing you know, somebody come and give you a prophetic word about you preaching. And you be like, yeah, I've heard that. That's confirmation. And I've been hearing that down through the years. Well, down through the years, have you followed through? Have you followed through? Have you surrendered? Have you chosen him to the point of following through? Because Jesus followed through. Now, is it easy? It's not going to be easy. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be easy. Y'all see from the beginning, I'll be logging in. My little technical issues every time I logged in, but I still follow through. <laughs> I'm not a technical person. One day he'll send me a technical crew. Right now I got a sound crew. I'm grateful for my sound crew, my kids. Amen. And some things they're learning along the way because they know mommy has chosen to follow Lord. They know as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. And this is what we're gonna do as a family. This is what we're gonna do as a team. Team spoon. That's what we do. That's how we roll over here. But, I, but I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, all jokes aside, you know, if we're choosing him, then we have to follow through with what, we, what he's called us to do. We can't stop with, I, Lord, I want your will for my life. And then when he tells you, these are the conditions. Lord, I need to be healed. And when he tells you, uh, if my people, which are called by my name, will seek my face. When he tells you in Matthew 6, to seek first my kingdom, then we back up. I don't want to do all of that. I, I don't want to do all of that. But you continue to be in pain. You continue to be in the same situation because you won't surrender. You won't submit and you won't choose him because choosing him means a surrender. Choosing him means a submission. Choosing him means a following through with what he's called you to do and not going, oh, somebody prophesied that to me 10 years ago. Well, from 2009 to 2019, 
what you been doing? <laughs> what you been doing? You know, is it time to surrender? Is it time to submit? So, you know, and is it time to repent and make a decision? Lord, forgive me for not choosing you. Forgive me for choosing other things and forgive me for procrastinating. Because when we procrastinate, you know, a lot of times that's, that's fear-based. You know, so forgive me for, for allowing the fear to settle in to the point where I did not choose you. But I chose to allow the fear to con continue to, to increase in my life rather than you increasing in, in my life. So maybe, you know, some of us may need to repent and make a decision. That's between you and God. I'm not judging nobody, but I'm just asking, you know, what do you want? What do you want? Do you want the giver or, or do you just want what he can give you? Do you want the healing or do you actually want the healing? Do you want the prophetic or do you want to choose the one who sends the word? Because Jesus is the prophecy, is the testimony of Jesus. Do you want him? Do you desire him? You know, how many times has the Lord gotten us through tough times and situations that you, we know we couldn't have handled on our own? A lot of times we want saving, but we don't want the Savior. We just want the saving to come on through. But like, hey, God did it again. I, I, oh, we see those posts a lot of times on social media. Oh, won't he do it? And then we go back to living the same way. Jesus did it. God did it. And then we go back to living the same way. We won't choose him and allow transformation to take place in our lives. Allow his healing to take place in our lives because we just won't choose him. We just want the saving. Because the Savior requires some submission. The, Jesus the Lord, oh yeah, requires some submission for him to be Lord. That means he's in charge. He's in control. Not me. Not you. So there's some decisions that have to have to be made um, so that we're not continually rejecting him. We're receiving and we're rejecting at the same time. Receiving with one hand and pushing away at the same time. How about we just open our hands and, and embrace the love of God. We embrace um, his love for us and we receive and we follow through with that which he's called us to do. How about that? How about that? I think that works. Anybody that works for you, give me some pops, give me some taps. I want to screen just something. Are y'all there? Because <laughs> I can see all the names on the screen, but you know, Facebook doesn't scroll um, on the laptop like it does on the app. But I know I see some names here. And thank you all for being here with me. So let's just pray. Let's just, let's just pray. Father God, first of all, we just want to ask for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness, Father God, when we did not choose you, when we received one hand and pushed you away with the other hand. Father, I just ask that you forgive us right now in the name of Jesus for those times when we rejected you as Savior and we only wanted the Savior. We only wanted what you could do for us. We only wanted you to get us out of a tight jam, one that we knew we could not get up, up our, on, on our own. And then we walked away as if you did not do anything for us. Father God, I ask that you forgive us Father, I just repent before you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I just ask that you begin to purify our hearts, that you help us to adjust to your purpose and your plan and, and choosing you, Father God, so that we're living according to your purpose and your plan and not our own. Father God, we want to be to the point where when we say, nevertheless, your will be done, that we are willing to follow through whatever that is. We don't want it to no longer be just words out of our mouth, but God, help our lips, our lips to a, and our heart to come and to alignment with what your heart is. What is it that you're calling us to do? What is it that you're speaking to our hearts to say to someone, to encourage someone or whatever, whatever it is, God, whatever it is that you're saying to do, wherever, wherever it is that you're saying for us to go, God, give us a, a, a help us to come into alignment with that, to come into an agreement with that, that we're not just saying nevertheless, God, but our actions are demonstrating that we have chosen you. Our actions are demonstrating that we have said in our hearts, not just with our lips, nevertheless, thy will be done. Father, help us to follow through with that which you have called us to do. Tonight, we make a decision to choose you. Tonight, we make a decision to yield to you. Tonight, we make a decision to say, yes, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done in our lives, and we will follow through and do exactly what you have called us to do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We repent right now, Father. We turn. We make a decision. We turn, and we choose you. We turn from the wicked ways. 
Hallelujah. We make a decision and we accept the conditions that you have laid out before us in your word. Not everything requires a condition, but there are areas, oh God, where we needed to have chosen you and we did not. We just decided to do something else. Father, forgive us when we put church work before you, when we put people before you before spending time with you, when we've uplifted people and never exalted you. Father, when we chose man, when we chose job, when we chose finance, when we chose possessions and material things over you, Father, forgive us. I pray, but we've made idols out of people, idols out of things instead of choosing you. Father, forgive us, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Again, I'm Prophetess Michelle Witherspoon. I thank you all for logging on with me live and watching by replay. I pray God's blessings upon you. Again, I may not, I won't be back on next Tuesday, um, but I will be back sometime next week. So just follow our page and look for us to pop up, look for the notification to show up on your devices and join us live, join us by replay, however works for you. Um, I pray God's blessings upon you and I thank you for meeting me here tonight on this new night, new time. Um, I will see you all at another time. God bless, bye-bye.